Sports. I'm Melinda Zosh. We begin with heartbreaking news out of Mercer County. A missing teen is deceased. This information is coming directly from the Princeton Police Department and the Aware Foundation of Virginia. That's right, Martin. This Tazewell County case has been continued more than 100 times since the body of Caitlin Toller was found back in April of 2017. Yeah, the National Funeral Director Association reports that casket funeral costs have risen more than $500 since 2016. When a family member or loved one goes missing, the feeling of uncertainty can be overwhelming for all involved. Our Ben Schwartz spoke with law enforcement today on what the search process looks like on their end and what family and friends can do to make sure their loved one is tracked down as soon as possible. Ben joins us now live in the newsroom. So Ben, what did you learn today? Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Melinda Zosh. We start tonight with breaking news. We now know the identity of the suspect in custody related to the homicides of four University of Idaho students. We now turn to our Taylor Hankins. She's been looking into that claim today. She joins us now in the studio and shares what she's found. So Taylor, what did you learn today? The incident was caught on camera showing that former cop apparently attacking patrons at a sports bar in Bluefield, West Virginia. Yeah, it's a training session that unfolds in Tazewell County and after the school massacre in Texas, classroom safety is a top concern for many parents. First at five, new details on a threat that led to a lockdown at a Mercer County High School. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Melinda Zoff. There's a battle for control of the U.S. House of Representatives as Republicans are hoping for a red wave. Now we turn to the election and a scandal emerging in a House of Delegates race here in southern West Virginia. Night. This includes five new districts in the House of Delegates. Our Annie Moore joins us with the latest. Our Glenn Kittle talks with West Virginia's top elections officer who shares what voters need to know. The Chamber of Commerce of the two Virginias hosts a breakfast for lawmakers from two states. The all-Republican panel gave their points of view from this year's sessions in Charleston and Richmond. Joining me right now in the studio is West Virginia's Attorney General Patrick Morrissey. Mr. Morrissey, thank you for being here today. It's great to be with you. Thank you. So you've joined a multi-state effort urging President Biden to classify fentanyl as a weapon of mass destruction. Sorry. Let's talk about that. Welcome back. It's Tuesday. You know what that means. It's time for a new edition of All Points Bulletin. Major Harold Heatley joins us now in the studio. So, Major, do we have any new captures this week? And it has ties to the Commonwealth. WVVA learned the accused, Dallasu Phillips, used to be a counselor for Family Preservation Services. So December 2nd, the day before 14-year-old Kiara Jackson was reported missing, her mother's boyfriend, Roderick Neal, was arrested for domestic battery. The police report says Neal had hit Jackson and punched her mother, Sarah Mullins, in the face. The report says the altercation between Neal and Mullins started over Neal's missing cell phone. This day, 12 years ago, an explosion ripped through the Upper Big Branch Mine in Raleigh County, taking 29 coal miners from family, friends, and their loved ones. But its location has yet to be approved. It turns out there's some confusion over whose job it is to do so. Bluefield State College will receive $1 million as part of a workforce expansion program announced in December. Yeah, 62%, or that equals just over 1.1 million West Virginians, have received at least one shot of a COVID-19 vaccine. 57% have gotten a full dose, and just 43% of those fully vaccinated have gotten their booster shots. Now to a follow-up on the July flooding that impacted West Virginia and Virginia, including McDowell, Mingo, Buchanan, and Tazewell counties. The U.S. Small Business Administration, or SBA, is offering one-on-one -on -one assistance. In a moment, a public affairs specialist with SBA will be joining us to share more information. She joins us now via Zoom from Lexington, Kentucky. So, Tahita, what kind of assistance is now available? Yeah. He was, Martin. Young can visited volunteers and victims as damage assessments continue following Tuesday's flood. We start with the weather this evening. Are some winter-like conditions on the horizon for us? Let's check in first with meteorologist Jeffrey Houle, who has a first look at the current conditions and what's ahead this week, Jeffrey. Jim Justice has declared a state of emergency for West Virginia ahead of potentially dangerous winter weather. Crews in the West Virginia Department of Transportation's Division of Highways will be on standby to treat roadways. If ice remains a threat for roadways this holiday weekend. All right, thank you, Ben, and good luck to Gage. And Ben, I'm hearing there's also an opportunity at Food City for customers to donate to local animal shelters. 
There's a business in Mercer County that offers services you may need for your home. So this includes things like wiring, indoor and outdoor lighting installations, emergency repairs, generators, and more. Right now, we are going to put the spotlight on the upcoming Community Veterans Stand Down and Food Distribution event in Princeton. It's an annual event, and it's coming up on November 5th at 9 a.m. That's a Saturday. It will be held at the Lifeline Princeton Church of God. That's located on Oakville Road in Princeton. If you're looking for live entertainment this upcoming weekend, then the city of Bluefield is the place to be. There's a bluegrass acoustic band Coming here, they're set to perform at the historic Granada Theater this Saturday. There's a celebration happening in Withville on Saturday, and it centers around an old theater being restored. Right now, Jeff Potts joins me via Zoom from Withville to share more information. He's the executive director of the Millwald Theater. And Jeff, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, Melinda. Happy to be here. Absolutely. So coming up Saturday, it's a celebration of the theater's birthday. So there will be a lighting of the restored marquee sign. Share more with us about Saturday's event. If you like to dress up and if you love tea and socializing, there's an event for you coming up this month in Bramwell. It's happening on Saturday, September 24th. It's called Tea on the Veranda. Joining me now to share more information is Erin Eller. So Erin, thank you so much for joining thank us. Thank you for having me. Joining me now to share more information are Marie Blackwell and Roger Topping. Both are committee members for the event. Marie and Roger are also familiar faces here in Mercer County. Thank you both for joining us today. Thank, thank you, you for having, having us. us. Absolutely. So Marie, I'll start with you. For those who are unfamiliar with this stand down event, what is it exactly? So you may have participated, you may have heard of it. It literally involves packing shoe boxes with goodies, and then those boxes are, are shipped to kids all over the world. Hey Martin, it certainly feels like it's back to school season here at Calvary's Hill Church in Bluefield, Virginia. There are volunteers here behind us. They are busy packing together items, backpacks full of goods for students in need. Welcome back. The Commonwealth is sending one grocery store bagger to Las Vegas early next year to compete for the title of best in the country. Our Ben Schwartz is live in Bluefield, Virginia's Food City as he spoke with the state's champion today. Ben. Hey, Martin, as Catherine had mentioned, we're outside Chicory Square and talk about good timing. I can hear the parade right behind me. In fact, I can see the flashing lights. I can hear the sirens. The excitement is building. People are lining up the streets, waiting for the parade to come by. It's about to pass us. Before it does, if I can quickly come over here, I want to show you all some ornaments on display. So if you come out here across from Chicory Square, you can buy an ornament of Mitchell Stadium. I certainly did, Martin, and su super fans is definitely the right word. So this week I met two men who have been following these teams for decades. And for one man, he loves the Graham G-men. In fact, that love goes all the way back to the 1960s when he was just 14 years old. She turned 105 years old. She was born on January 6th, 1917. She was just a baby during World War I and the Spanish flu. She's seen World War II. She's lived to see many presidents take office, and today she received a special birthday surprise. At one local hospital, every day is Labor Day. More than a half a dozen healthcare professionals here at Princeton Community Hospital at the Women's Health Center have either recently given birth or they're expecting a baby or babies. Catherine, we've seen a lot of amazing school spirit. We have little kids out here marching, wearing their school pride for the Bluefield Beavers. The excitement is off the chains right now. <laughs> We're here at Bluefield City Park near Bowen Field. You can bring your kids. There's bouncy houses. There's some grilling going on right now, and it's a great opportunity to meet your local law enforcement officials, those who are protecting and serving our local communities. Weather is absolutely beautiful this evening. It's gorgeous, full of sunshine, although, Catherine, I think I might get myself a little bit of water here shortly. <laughs> come out here. It's beautiful weather to meet some first responders and police officers. Joining me right now is Deputy Andrew Lane with Tazewell County Sheriff's Office. Well, Jared, let me tell you how it can also be used as a form of fashion. It's when you wear it, when you take clothing just like this right off the hanger and put it on. I'm holding the official State Fair of West Virginia shirt for 2022. In this case, it's safe to say that seven moms and eight babies will certainly make plenty of positive memories here inside PCH. 
Reporting in Princeton, I'm Melinda Zosh. Yeah, it's that time of year, Jared, to start thinking about getting those number two pencils and perhaps some notebooks for your kids or grandkids who are headed back to school. Hey, Jared, the fun is just getting started out here at the final Field Fest in Bluefield, Virginia. We're located between Jack Asbury Square and the Farmer's Market right over here beside me. And there's plenty of food out here as well. I'm excited to try some pulled chicken here shortly. Joining me right now is Nathaniel Mitchum. He's the owner of It's the Pits Food Truck. So, Nathaniel, what kind of food are you offering tonight? Hey, Jared, it's the first year that Sea Lion Splash has made its way to the Mountain State all the way from Texas. Joining me now is Jimmy Earhart. You may have seen him here on WVVA News at noon. He's joining us once again. He's the Sea Lion trainer here. So, Jimmy, talk to us about some of the Sea Lions, including Zoe right here behind us. Hey, Martin, we are having a great time out here. It's the final field fest of the season. Tonight's theme is back to the field. It certainly feels like that with live music. We have a foam pit right here behind us. Joining me now is Kim Hernandez. She's the chairman of the field fest. Okay, let's go ahead and open this up and we can show our viewers what's inside. And you're preparing for about 200 students, isn't that right? Pre-K all the way up through high school? Yes, ma'am. Hey Josh, we're just outside Bowen Field. I'm here with the other Josh, Josh Widman, and I have Diana <laughs> and Liz here. Ladies, which team are you rooting for today? Graham. <laughs> Graham all the way. All the way. Okay, <laughs> Graham all the way. But I'm sure we're going to find a lot of Beavers fans out there tonight, wouldn't you say, Josh? Catherine, there's a couple things people at home need to know if they're coming out here tonight. The first is a new clear bag policy. If you don't have a clear bag, right. if you have a purse, they will check it, so that may hold up your weight in line a little bit. Parking started at about 4.30, so police are out guiding you where to park so it's very important you pay attention to their instructions as well so Catherine we saw some showers a little bit ago it was raining on us how's it looking though tonight for the game not just t-shirts that are popular out here at the West Virginia company booth there's also greeting cards there's stickers and there's these metal signs for sale and the three sea lions here Lily Maya and Zoe are making quite the splash and also the impression so it's a beautiful shirt. It has horses on it. It has some cows, a Ferris wheel, and it would look great with a pair of jeans or maybe a denim skirt. I'm a lady who loves to shop, and I'm sure there's some ladies out there who can relate. So, hey, I'm going to show you where you can get this shirt. And Zoe the sea lion here has learned more than 70 behaviors. One of them is to sing it. Well, we have arrived here at the State Fair of West Virginia. I'm here with Major Harold Heatley. Look what we found. Okay, so hot off the fryer. We're about to try our cinnamon toast crunch funnel cakes. All right, so Greg, what's new this year is we have dill pickle lemonade, and it says it's a big deal. Dill, I should say. It is a big deal, dill. In this case, it does, and guess what? We're washing it down with some strawberry lemonade and a nice State Fair of West Virginia souvenir cup. All right, and you know what, guys? That's my cue to take off here. I'm going to hand things over to Chief Meteorologist Katherine Thompson, and I'm literally driving out. Go. She's gone. She's gone, everybody. You should have known that this would happen. Here we go. It's a great, great night for Melinda to drive off into the sunset. There she goes. 